Good morning, Magnet, and welcome to AMHS Student News, live from our house's coronavirus edition. I am Sammy Rosenberg, and let's get to it for today. Um, so first up, we're going to hear some information about the coronavirus test from Andrew, who had the wonderful honor of being tested the other day. So let's go over to Andrew and hear all about that. He's out of the car. He's walking to the tent. All right, sir, go ahead. Sit down there for me. And I'm going to have you blow your nose for me first. Yeah. Okay, so, so we're going to do a COVID swap. Okay, what that is, is it's this little Q-tip that goes into the back of where your nose and your throat meet, okay? Once I get back there, I have to stay there for 10 seconds while I'm twisting the swap, okay? A lot of times it makes your eye, your eyes water. It makes you want to cough. In extreme cases, it does make people want to vomit, okay? If you vomit, it's okay, just vomit yes. that way, not on us, that's all we ask, yes. okay? You also cannot touch me or the swap during this, or we have to do it all over again, okay? If you feel like you're gonna touch me, you need to sit on your hands, okay? And then you're gonna tilt your head back and she's gonna hold your head for you, okay? okay. Let me get all ready, all right? Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, sounds like a very interesting, maybe uncomfortable, potentially painful experience, but nonetheless, let's go over to Will Kronsberg, who's got a little update about Sports World going on for us. Thanks, Sammy. So we've really not had any sports for well over a month since Utah Jazz player uh, Rudy Gobert tested positive for COVID-19 right before their game against the Oklahoma City Thunder, just the second week of March, around when we had our school canceled, um, and other sports quickly followed suit. So the National Collegiate Athletic Association canceled not only March Madness for basketball, but all of their spring sports seasons. Um, the MLB never got to start their season, and uh, even fall sports like the NFL and college football are looking at possible modifications or cancellations. But some positives are starting to come about as time goes on with our quarantine. Uh, Major League Baseball is looking at ways in which they can start their season. Uh, a couple proposals include isolating teams to just two or three areas around the country, like Florida, Arizona, and possibly Texas, so that they can really control the spread, or, uh, or waiting until early July to start the season when things might be a little bit safer. The NFL is uh, taking precautions, uh, including things like the New Orleans Saints not having any off-season team activities and all other teams that do choose to have activities doing it online and with no uh, in-person workouts. Now, the NFL did just have their first year player draft last Thursday, and uh, LSU quarterback Joe Burrow went number one overall, followed by two Ohio State defenders, Chase Young and Jeff Okuda. It was a nice change for sports fans to finally have something live to watch. Uh, it went on for three days with seven rounds total. So the first round was on Thursday with the second through seventh rounds following on Friday and Saturday. That's it. Back to you, Sammy. Okay. Welcome back. And next up, we're going to hear some information about graduation and some other stuff from our student body president, Davis. So let's go over to Davis and hear about that. Hello, Davis here. So I wanted to give a quick update on graduation and the end of the year celebrations for seniors. As we heard last week, graduation ceremonies are scheduled to be virtual. And so I want to dispel some rumors that I've heard about that. That's not going to be a live Zoom or anything like that. It's going to be a pre-recorded video, more so as a placeholder for the event on June 5th than any actual ceremony. And the ceremony in person will be later, perhaps in the summer or if need be in the fall. And all of that is dependent on when large groups can gather legally, depending on what Governor McMaster says. We are also in talks of making other celebrations for the seniors. Once again, that is dependent on Governor McMaster and the health codes. 
Lastly, I do want to mention that on May 20th, all seniors should go to Magnet to pick up their uh, belongings in their lockers, as well as drop off their textbooks. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Davis. I know it's all a little bit different, a little bit disappointing, potentially, especially for our seniors. I know I'm a little bit disappointed with this situation, but we all do our best with it. And a little bright sign is the U.S. News & World Report recently uh, released their newest rankings, um, and Magnet is number two, very respectable. And we're going to go hear a little bit about that from Mason. Hello everybody, this is special reporter Mason Lee, reporting live from my house. This just in, an anonymous source, aka US News, just leaked that Magnet is no longer the number one high school in the country. <sighs> well, I'm sad to hear this. I think back to an ancient Chinese proverb by Sun Tzu that I learned in kindergarten. First is the worst, second is the best. So, I contacted another anonymous source, aka Wikipedia, to expose our newest rival, the Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology, also known as the TJHSSTJHLSSTXXO. I know, it's a mouthful. Alright, so I'm told the Thomas Jefferson is located in Fairfax County, which is basically a suburb of DC in Northern Virginia. And it's approximately three times the size of Magnet, at 2,000 students. The Colonials, as they're known, boast a high-powered alumni group featuring many famous politicians, executives, and Rose Scholars, which I admit is very impressive. Their school colors are red, white, and blue. Wow, ripping off the Founding Fathers again. Where's the originality? <laughs> One distinguishing feature of the school is their domed entrance, modeled after the namesake's home in Monticello. It looks like this. Thanks, editors. That's all the time we have for today. See you next week for the town's last edition this year. Thank you very much, Mason. Welcome back, everybody. That was our show for you today. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all healthy and safe. And thank you very much for tuning in to Student News, even though you're uh, at home. And have a wonderful weekend.